Okay, so let's get on with actually editing these photos. The first thing we've done is we've done a little bit of white balance. Now we've not we've not manually done it, we've used this white balance selector here. Just a reminder, I'm using Lightroom version 5. Um, I'm not sure if later or earlier versions will look the same. But this is this is how Lightroom 5 looks. So we can see that by sort of changing oh, that's that's a bit too. So if you click and you want to go back, it's just a control Z or Z if you're American. And that'll take away you can see here your history on the left hand side. And that's telling us we've done one thing, which is white balance custom. That's got us here. Now I'm not sure if I like that. I think maybe we put a little bit more, a little bit more natural colouring back into it. Um. Hmm. Now I've just realised that I shouldn't be doing white balance. Let's actually. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our port. We're going to let's get back. There we go. Okay. Let's start here. What we actually want to do first is we want to do a batch edit. Now batch edits can be very, very helpful if you are in a situation where the lights are, you know, maybe so, you know, you can see here we've got a bit of a green tint, we've got a little bit of a pink tint. Sometimes that can be a bit overpowering, might wash out your skin tone. So batch edits can be good to, to get rid of that um, and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. I'm going to do some edits to this photo and then we're going to apply it to all of our photos. So the first thing we're just going to have, I'm going to put a little bit of contrast in. And this is also my personal way of editing photos. Um, other people might like it looking differently. Um, this is just this is just the way I like to do it. So if we go down here, we've got clarity. Now clarity, I'll always put up at least ten. Um, I just I just think it looks better <laughs> when just a little bit of clarity. Sometimes it's good to to put a lot of clarity. Right now. We're just going to plus 10. Vibrance, I'm also going to plus 10. And I'm just typing that in. Okay, I'm just clicking on these numbers and typing in what I want to do to it. Saturation I'll leave just now. Um, because we'll do that on a more sort of case by case basis. Now we're going to go down here. We don't want that. What we want to do is lens corrections. Now. Lightroom has, yes, there we go. So Lightroom has saved into it profiles from all your kind of major, as you can see here, um, all your major cameras, camera makers, all of the lenses, even if it doesn't have the lens, it's really easy to put it in. Um, I'm sure there's probably DLC you can get to put that in. But we want to enable profile. now. You see, it's a very, very subtle change. Depending on the lens that you're using, this can correct uh, chromatic aberrations. It can correct a lot of darkening around the outside. With a 50 millimeter, you know, there's a little bit. You can see, if we look up at the hair here, see it just brings it a little bit more, more clarity there. Um, I would say you generally want to do profile corrections on every like there's not there's not many um lenses who are, who are not going to have a little bit of distortion a little bit of vignette into it um you can do it manually here so if you're looking at that and going it still feels a bit distorted you know you can undistort it yourself or however you feel and same with the vignette and you can do that there Talking about vignetting, we're going to do that here. 
this is um, Proskop crop vignetting, which means that however you crop the photo, the vignette will always apply. Crop and something we're going to do later on. So I now I need to try and get my settings right for this. So what I'm going to do, we're going to set it really high just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, because we want quite a lot of feathering. Okay, we want it to be quite round. This is probably not the best photo to test on, to be honest. This is um, when you don't have your presets. It can be hard to get these things. Now that's, that's way too... I think I want a bigger round. Do we want it? If you can't see what I'm doing here, um, let me see if I can get a better photo. Right, this is probably a good photo to show you the vignette and on. So, what the vignette does is it does that. Okay. A vignette is a very useful tool for bringing your eye into the centre. Um, it's even when you apply it really, really subtly, it does make a big, big difference. So, just turn that up so we can. So, we want it to be very round. We want it to be very, very, very feathered. And where do we want? We want the midpoint to be quite. So, let's try that. If I press Y on the keyboard, we can see before and after. Just all the profile corrections. Now, you can see it's it's such a subtle, it's a really, really, really subtle difference. But it does, it does make, it does sort of draw the eye in to the centre a bit more. Not the best photo to use this as an example because the item, <laughs> the thing of the photo is offset, but you get the idea for where we want it. So what we're we looking at here, we're 29, minus 26, minus 14, 69, and 81. So let's go back to our first photo, because this is going to be our batch edit photo. So let's, let's get this to where we were that one. Oh yeah, it can also do white. Um, I can't say I've ever used that myself. Um, the white, um, yeah, the, the white vignette, I'm not, I'm not sure about, but okay. So we've got our profile corrections done. I've got our vignette done. Um, other ones we want to do, as I said, we've got a little bit of a little bit of vibrance. I've popped the, co the contrast up a bit. We don't really need that, but that's fine for now. Now, these are very, very subtle. I mean, if you have a look, there's, there's barely anything going on there, really. But all of these little th subtle things, you really, really do add up. So what we're going to do is we click on this one. So this is the one we've done our, just our sort of start, start and edits on. Go all the way to the end and we press shift, click, it selects them all. Okay, but this one here is the one that's selected first. If we then right click, we can do. No, we don't right click, what we do is sync. See, I remember now. There we go, synchronize settings. Here you can. Just check this. Here you can select which of the settings that you applied in the first photo you want to apply to the rest of the photo. So the ones that we've done, we've got the vignette, grain, we've not done anything with that, but that's okay. We've done the lens profile corrections and we've done a little bit of a uh, contrast and a little bit of clarity. So the other ones you can leave, you can leave checked as long as you've not changed them. It's not going to do you any harm, and we're going to synchronize. Now, if we go to 
just come over here. If we go to the second photo, you will see, if we go in our settings here, clarity, vibrance, profile, all of these things have already been applied to this photo. It just streamlines things a little bit. Eventually what you want to do is you want to set these up in presets over on the left hand side here. Um, it's really simple and then you're just clicking on them to apply them. These are techniques, things that you learn as you go through using Lightroom. Um, it's, it's a bit of experience, it's a bit of just time doing it, and it's a bit of going, you know, this thing that I'm doing is really time consuming, how can I make it easier? There's always a way to make it easier. So when I get to this point, I tend to get a bit, probably a bit annoying, because I look at that photo and I go, oh, I, don't, I don't really like that photo here. I go to this one, I'm like, eh, it's okay, no, it's okay. And then uh, that one's okay as well. But I want to find a really good one. I want to find the one that's going to be fun to edit, you know. So let's see. This one's interesting because we've got, we've got a good focal point and a face here. We've got a good facial expression. I like that facial expression. We've got this really annoying light over his shoulder. So let's see what we can do with this. Okay. First of all. I do a little crop, not much. I want to make sure that the guitar is in the shot, even though the head of the guitar is mis is cropped out, which is a bit of a shame, but I want to make sure that that's still in. Okay, and we we'll just press return to apply that. Now, here is where you can get very, very, very almost Photoshop-like. I'm not going to do that just now. It might be something that um, I'll do later, maybe, you know, do another stream about it. Um, but right now you can do, you can do sort of spot removal um, you've got your filters and your adjustment brushes that you can work onto this bit. Oh, that's, that's a bit close. Um, there we go. You can work onto this bit here. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you quite simple ways to get rid of this sort of glare. You can see we've got this light up here as well. Now these are, if we go, well, these are actually okay. Oh no, you can see here. So this is highlight clipping. What this means is these are too white. It means that there's no data. Literally there's no sort of color data in these pieces. So it means that you can't really do much with them. The camera has captured the light and because it's, this is really ter terrible terminology I'm using, but because the light's almost too white, it's, it's not, there's no shadows, there's no depth, you know, there's no, there's not much you can do with it. If we, this is just me highlighting over here, highlight clipping. You can also do this with your shadow clipping. I don't know if we've got any shadow clipping here. Uh, no, if not, that's the same. That's when it's literally too dark. But this is our highlight clipping here. But we can still do things. We can still we can still do things with it. First thing, obvious thing to do is get our highlights down. Now, when when I'm doing things like this, I like to just it all the way. Just put it to 100% or minus 100 and see what difference it makes. Because if we go do a little bit and we mess about with something else and we do a little bit more, you don't know how far you can push it. Just put it to 100%. There's no damage being done. If you don't like it, you just double click on this little bit here and it goes back. But you can see here, doing to its fullest, it's actually taken it down quite a bit. You know, we've, we don't have that glare anymore. And it's just like a really <laughs> annoying sun over his shoulder. And we can push it as well if we want it to look ridiculous. So if we turn that down, now we don't want to turn it down too much because then it just turns into a solid ball. So let's do that, okay. 
and let's see. You can darken our shadow a little bit. These sliders are great because you can see it happening as you go. So it just means that you can play about and just get a proper feel. You can do this with all of these. Temperature, yep, you know. If you you know, let's let's do something let's do something weird. You can just throw it down and double click to put it back to where it was. And you can see how deep we can go with the blacks now. I'm gonna push this quite far. Clarity, clarity is one of my favourite sliders. Um clarity you have to use Use with some restraint because it starts to get into the um super duper HDR um photos if you push it too far and so it's, it's a look some people really like that look it works sometimes it doesn't work all the time so let's just just use it with a little bit of restraint I think is all I'm recommending again play with saturation. See where that takes us. Now, black and white might work for this whole, but I'm not going to go there yet. Black and white's a whole other thing we've got to give it to. So, what I'm not enjoying right now is there's a definite orange sort of ness, right, feeling, and I want to make that a little bit fresher. So, I want to make that not too blue. Just wanna just wanna make it feel neutral. Don't forget, press Y. Because if you sit staring at one photo for too long and you think that looks okay, and you go back to where you started and you realise that maybe it's not. Maybe it's actually worse. Um Okay, so I feel like I've got some shadows going on here that I don't really like. Although I do like the way the light's catching on his hair. Now, this I'm not going to go into it just now, but there's there's so many different ways that you can play with this sort of stuff. That's that's way too dark. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it just now. I want to just kind of cover it cover it in a sort of an easy sort of easy to digest kind of way so I'm looking at this now and I'm going it's okay don't love it I'm not I'm not in love with it you know um but that's fine because not every photo is going to be a winner so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this one and we're going to go into another photo because it's important to not sit and look at one thing for too long because you'll, you'll just go mad. You'll just send yourself crazy. You want to give yourself a little bit of time to have a look at something else and then come back and then think it's not so bad or maybe I just need to ditch it altogether. One thing I should have done because all of these photos are generally quite noisy, nothing being a high eye and so, I want to do this noise reduction. And I think 25 is usually quite a good amount. Now you see it's not went down too much. You have to be careful with noise reduction because if you go to 100%, it goes like that, which is um, not, <laughs> not really the look we're going for. So you don't want to go, you don't want to go full away on that. But you just, just take away the noise a little bit. There you go. Um, Colour, um, again, we're not wanting to go, I'm not going to touch that just now. Just leave that. Let's go into our next phone and see what we've got. What have we got here? Okay, we've got another bright line. Let's, what shall we, let's do this one. Here we go. This is a fun a fun action shot. Would have been better with a wide lens but you know we can't have it all can we? So what have we got going on in this? We've got the nine light 
up in the top left. Probably not going to be much we can do about that. I want to crop this down just a little bit. Okay. So we want to be. Oh, don't do that. Control Z, remember? Just to get back. So I feel like I just want to be cropped in a little bit more. We want full of this guitar here, so we don't want to crop out any of that. He is our sort of focal point for this one. Let's try that. Return just to apply the crop. Okay. Now, this other thing to note, exposure is something that you really shouldn't touch too much. Um, exposure, pushing the exposure too high is what will make the noise come out, as you can see here. I mean, that's as far as I can push it, and that's you know obviously ridiculous. It's okay to do it a little bit, um, but I would never recommend playing with exposure too much in post-production. You're just going to get too much noise. If the photo's dark, if it's, you know, there's other ways to go around it. Put it that way. Let's see how our colour temperature is looking. Remember, we've got the little preview in the top left. So, let's see what differences we can get here. Don't so you see that's made it a little bit more, a little bit bluer, kind of. Taking away a bit of the sort of pink. So I think, I think we'll take that just now. This pink, right. Do you know what? This pink's really, really annoying me. Let's get rid of it. So here, these are, these are some of my favourite things to do. Here we have um, hue, saturation, luminance. We have colour and we have black and white. What are these? These are where you can play about with specific colours in photo itself. Now don't forget that up at the top here we have our very specific like spot removal tools and all that. But this is a quick way to do things like this. Um, and it's it's a slightly easier way rather than, you know, sort of going, zooming in, doing things really, really close. So, we have hue and we have saturation. Luminance, I don't know, we might touch luminance. Generally, I'm going to play with saturation because I've got this and it's too pink. The light isn't bothering me, it's the colour of the light. It's too distracting. Your eye should be over here. But you find your eye going over here because there's a big bright pink light here. Just as a note, if you do a lot of live gigs, pink and blue seem to be the LED lights that are used a lot. Now, I'm not sure why this is. Um, I think it's better for the people on stage, I want to say, rather than a bright light, you know, like if it's a bright white light. It's, it's too much. But pink and blue lights are just, they look horrendous in photos. They just they do, pink does such bad things with skin tone. Blue just, you know, does the same kind of stuff. So let's fix it. Okay, let's at least get rid of this light. So we've got the saturation here. We've got this little, little stopper tool. Now you could use, you could do this. Okay. You'd be like, I don't want any blue in it. Look at that. Look at the difference that makes. Okay. I actually take that down a bit. I feel like maybe there was a blue light on them as well. Um. So we could do that. Do that manually. But the other thing we can take this little dude. There we go. This little cross, and you put him over whichever color is really, really annoying you. Okay. If you look over the right hand side, when I mouse over, so if I mouse over here, this pink, see over the right hand side, that's highlighted the magenta. If I move out, we've got purple, we've got, oh, we've got a bit, what have we got here? We've got the orange here, we've got the red, obviously. Right here is the purple, okay? And we want to get rid of that. So what we're doing is we're clicking, 
we're actually moving the mouse down physically on our on our mouse mat and you can see the bar going down there but what it's doing is it's not just taking down the purple it's taking down any color that's under your mouse wheel at that point and where that was there was also some blue as well you wouldn't get that by just moving the blue on its own so this is why this tool is really 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 good so let's do that again now obviously we're not going to go the full way but you can see how much of the blue is going down as well but i'm going to do that now you have to be careful with pink because if you go too far with pink it can or purple sorry it can really mess up skin tones as well but i think we did okay with that and if we press y look at the difference it's just not it's there there's still a light there and it's still obvious that there's a light there but it's just not commanding your attention the way that it was before um obviously it affects anything else with those color spectrums in the picture so you can see he's got a wristband here and on the left hand picture it's very very bright magenta if you look on the right hand you see it's toned it down a little bit obviously be aware that any color when you're using this tool any color that you pick could be present in the rest of the picture um as it is it putting down the pink on that it doesn't matter it's only a little bit um skin tone it's not done too bad i think we're just having a little visual look backwards and forwards here it all seems okay once you've done that you can still go back to your tint if you really wanted you could put more pink into it but what that's done is that's desaturated that specific purple and you're just not getting that hit of purple in your face it's an amazing amazing tool um, luminance can work as well um, let me just if i put these back i can show you what luminance does so if we pop this onto here and pull it down again what it's do doing see it's darker than that now in this situation i'm not sure which was i feel like the saturation was better but that's luminance is also a really good tool and hue um i don't use hue as much but it can be quite useful because what you're doing is you know you're just changing so the, the red of this guitar we can make it a little bit more orange you can see there or we can make it like more on the side i don't want to do that but you know it's that's something we can do let's just go back here just take this now you see it says went more blue that time because of where i clicked so let's be careful of that i'm just gonna do a little bit of manual the reason that the blue is affecting this photo so much is because outside of the screen here there's a blue light um well you can you can kind of see it on his hair there but there's definitely a blue tint taking that down is taking out a blue tint you don't want to do it too much you see when we take it the full way it's got that weird sort of it just loses it loses a bit for the dimension so we want it about there i think I'm going to pop down the highlights just to put that down a little bit more and pop up our shadows a little bit. Clarity, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I think I'll leave that actually around about there. And what I want to do is I want to get more black. So when you're messing about, when you're making things sort of a bit lighter here and there, you can lose the density of your blacks, of your shadows. We'll look down here. You can you can see everything, but it it's not it's not a sort of denseness. Now we lose a little bit of detail by adding in that in, but it adds a little bit more sort of dynamic feeling to it. <clears throat> now if we look at this overall, it's okay. I'm not. 100% happy with it, but you know, it's how these things go. I'm gonna just 
I twist it a little bit. Um, if you don't know what this tool is, this is the crop tool. Um, you can move it however you want. Um, you can lock in the aspect ratio so that you can only do it as shot. Um, so I'm not sure they're done. I didn't do it. Never mind. And if you go to the corners here, you can change the angle a little bit. Let's have a look. Nope, that looks strange. Changing the angle can be weird um, because you've got background elements. Now, obviously, these are not, none of these are straight. Look at the angles, but we can still. It's just I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fiddle. This is this is the worst thing I think. Um, it's so easy just to keep keep fiddling, you know, to keep playing about. Uh, the only thing I feel I feel like this one's a little bit flat now. It has lost a little bit of its. Actually, let's put points back up. Let's so put the shadows, uh, the highlights down. Just about that's about it. Bit. Okay. Again, let's not concentrate on that one too much. Okay, let's carry on. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep doing different things. Seeing what we can, what we can get out of them. Let's let's get a fun one to do. Could look at a black and white one as well. Now, something that happens. I don't know what I'm going to do with this fold, but I want to do something with it. Um. I mean that one's good, but something. <sighs> there's something fun going on here that I feel like maybe do something. With. That's the thing you not to forget. Like. Have fun with what you're doing. We can, we can do something with this. I'm not entirely sure what just now. Just say I'm not entirely sure, but we can do something fun with that. Okay, here's something we can look at. Sometimes you don't necessarily want to take out the color. If we look here, his skin tone is fine color is the lights are not affecting his skin tone so that's good if you look here they're not affecting the whites because those are pretty perfect whites so that's okay what the color is doing is it's providing highlight to his hair and it's providing highlight to his hand here and that works really well in this instance we're not going to take away any of that green because it enhances the photo. It's doing. Do you know? I don't even know. I don't know if I can drop it. You try. I need to fix this actually because it's, it's kind of bugging me. Um. You see, when it, I feel like I don't want to crop it either. Oops, didn't mean that. Control Z to get back. No, because we don't want to crop out the, f the finger. We don't want to be that, be that close. How about like that? Okay. Yeah, I think that's. I can deal with that. Okay, yeah, that's good. So, yep, yeah, we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose this green. It adds a uh, dynamic to it. All we want to do with this one is maybe. Sharpen up the blacks for the t-shirt. Okay. Sharpen up our contrast. Now I actually love that because what it's doing is it's really highlighting the logo here as well. Um, so I think that looks really good. Uh, let's not do that. Shadows. I don't. I don't think. No, we don't. We don't. Fuck that up a little bit. I want 
want don't want to lose I wonder how far I could push that maybe. don't want to push it too far but I don't want to lose the sharpness of these blacks um, again that's something we can look at with the clarity um, you know you push it too far obviously but if we sort of stop it there let's have a little look you see the I mean it's quite a major difference um, on the left hand side the black's a little bit washed out here on the right hand side just with playing with our sort of black set there shadows uh, I've not done into the, into the shadows actually don't a little bit um a little bit to the highlight just to bring out the just to bring out the logo there um and we've we've got that crispness back whereas on here it's a little bit flatter feeling um on here we've got the red the guitar we've got the green of this light and we've got the the darkness of the t-shirt going on um what would we do to this that's interesting then a little bit the other fun thing we could do actually let's do this um let's see color we can change this green go yellow look at that I like the yellow as much as green blue is quite nice though aqua this yeah we can because the reason that we can do this is because these are tonally very similar we're not like you can you couldn't really change this color to like red for example without messing up the the sort of balance whereas because these are all tonally quite similar we can play about i'm probably going to go back to the green to be honest i feel like the green was quite interesting um but it's just fun it's fun that we can play with it make it brighter a blue Let's have a look. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay. As I said, the other thing that's always good to remember is just put things to 100%. Because it might not look... It's not It's not as scary as you might think. Um, see how far you can push it. You, know? you go, no, that's too much. Bring it in a little bit. But make sure to always just do that and just see what you can get out of your foes. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of clarity on this one. Um, and you can see, obviously, because we did our batch sort of edit um, earlier on, we've got our blends, profile corrections done, and our little bit of vignetting going on. So, do a little bit. See how much that smoothed that out. If we compare here, see the noise here smoothed out a little bit there. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, so that's one photo that I'm actually happy with. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press P. Flag is pick. And these ones um, we rated as three. You can rate, if we look down here at the bottom right, you've got filter, one star up to five stars. So if you're, you know, if you really, really, really want to rate them very specifically, you can say, you know, this is a five star, this is a four star, whatever. Um, the way I do it, I just do threes. And then when I'm finished with a photo, when I go, I like that photo, I'm keeping that photo, I press P. Later on, we could go to flagged, or counted as flagged, and you can see the ones that you've selected as P. Um, and for me, that's just my way of saying, 
I like that photo, you know, I'm kind of done with it. I can remove it from here if I want to. I'm not going to do that because, you know, I might might go back and do something to it. But um, what you're doing with that, and if you notice, down at the bottom here, um, we've got all of our photos here, but the one that we've flagged has a nice little white border. Just as a little visual cue to tell you that that's one that you've picked. Also worthwhile looking at that. Uh, we're going to wrap up in about five minutes, but just worthwhile looking. We've got this one that's very, very similar. Now I picked the one on the right because I like the facial expression more. But what if we're looking at this one and going, what could this be a better photo? You know, look, the, the finger, for example, is more in frame. Maybe it could be better. Well, we've already done all the editing to this photo. So, select this photo, press shift on your keyboard, select this one. Then we'll go to sync, and this is what we did earlier. And we want, now we're syncing a lot more things. Because we've, you know, you see here, we've played with the highlights, shadows, all that stuff. Synchronize. And then, now, that has, I mean, it's got exactly the same editing done to it. Press Y. We can see the difference between the original on the left and the enhanced one on the right. Now, because those were two photos that were taken very quickly in succession, you can do that kind of editing without worrying about the lights changing too much or anything. Um, I do like the composition of this photo, but I don't know. Something about the facial expression that. So we're going to keep that one. We've got a lot to go through. Um, and I'm looking forward. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun photos that I want to I definitely want to get through here. Um Yeah. So what I think we'll do is I think we will get back on this tomorrow night and we'll we'll do some more editing. Um so I should be online round about the same sort of time tomorrow. But for tonight, thank you, and um, I'll see you later.